Hey everybody, welcome back to Lawrence County High School for another day of economics, and this is Economics 2. We were talking yesterday, we closed out talking about John Maynard Keynes and how his ideas influenced Franklin D. Roosevelt, and during the Great Depression he implemented a series of programs called the New Deal to try to help the United States get out of the Great Depression, which was a major problem here. Uh, we mentioned that there was lots of works programs, we talked about the CCC and the TVA, the WPA, the largest program of all, which we said employed, I think, 8 million people, and employed more people than just simply contractors and construction workers. We talked about in the arts as well. So one thing I want to show you today is this is something called the WPA Guide to Kentucky. And this is a book that was published during this period that looks at every county and pretty much every community in Kentucky. And so they had writers who were scattered out all throughout the, the, the state to compile this book and then it would sell the book and it's a way for you to just say, look how great our state is. So this is during the Great Depression. So I'm sure they hired some local writer to write about Louisa and Lawrence County. Every county's here. So I just want to read you a couple of little clips here or inserts, excerpts, thank you, from the book. It says, Louisa, with a population of 1,961, the seat of Lawrence County was named for Louisa, the Duchess of Cumberland. It is the pleasant old town dating from the flatboat era in a region of considerable, considerable natural beauty at the head of navigation on the Big Sandy River. During the Napoleonic Wars, thousands of bear skins were collected along the Big Sandy and Kanawha Rivers and sent from Louisa downriver to the Ohio and then on to New Orleans and then on to Europe where they were made into headpieces for Napoleon's grenadiers. So think about it, they were up here hunting bears and shipping their hides all the way to France. So when we we're first getting started, the French had come up into this area. The Big Sandy has been used for transportation for more than a century. Packets and barges superseded the crude early flatboats. Down the Tug and La Vaza came millions of logs from the forest to the upper valley bound for Louisa, and then sawmills along the, uh, the Ohio River. The Chesapeake and Ohio River built a terminus here years ago. Today, an occasional steamboat continues to carry traffic between this point and Calitzburg. At the northern end of Louisa, along US-23, is the Big Sandy Dam. It was the first movable needle-top dam built in the United States. This dam was erected in 1896 at a cost of $396,000. That's where the locks are now, and they're really no longer functional. But they came in and they had right, right at the turn of the century and they had built the locks up so boats could go even farther up the river, past Louisa, on down towards uh, Paintsville. Today, um, at the, the old freeze house at the end of Sycamore Street here in Louisa, overlooking the Big Sandy, is the only Georgian colonial home in Louisa. The two-story brick structure with walls 13 inches thick was built in 1840. A front porch and rear L have been added, and the house has been painted red with white trim. The original yellow poplar woodwork, all of it hand sawn, is still in place. This was the first home of Captain Milton Freeze, who operated packets on the Big Sandy and Ohio rivers for 50 years. According to a tradition believed by many, George Washington, before the revolution, had a tract of over 2,000 acres surveyed on both sides of the Big Sandy River, including the present town site of Louisa. This story is supported by the fact that a cornerstone of this survey bears the initials GW for George Washington. Another tradition, and this is a great story, and I've heard this before, but this is probably where it comes from. Another tradition concerning the selection of the Kentucky-Virginia boundary relates that three commissioners, selected by the governors of the two states, arrived late one evening in October of 1799 at the point where Louisa now stands. Now, let me just back up so you understand. These are people who are going to come to see where the state boundary is going to be. Remember, we're right on the edge of West Virginia, which would have been Virginia at the time, and we want to know where is going to be the line between Kentucky and Virginia. Rains had been falling and the waters of both forks of the Big Sandy were rising because remember, here where we live, the Tug River is coming from one side, the Lavaz is coming, and they both meet right there where the bridge is to turn into the Big Sandy. So the rain had been uh, rising, the rain had been falling and the Tug had been rising steadily and appeared to be much larger than the Lavaza. And forthworth, that became the boundary. The commissioners departed before the slowly rising waters of the Lavaza, normally the larger of the two, reached the junction of the forks. Satisfied with the result, Many years later, it was realized that had the Lavaza Fork been selected, 
the rich bottomlands and extensive mineral resources of the Big Sandy Valley would have remained a part of Virginia. So really what happened here is it said they came and they enjoyed the refreshments of the pioneers. They came and they drank too much moonshine that night, and so they're really hung over and they wake up the next day and they just sort of look and see that the tug is really up along and say, okay, that's the biggest river, let's make that the boundary. In reality, the Leviza is the bigger of the two. So think about that, had they not become intoxicated and fell bad the next day, then the point section would all belong to West Virginia and all that area, and that would really change a lot of things. It's in this book, is it true? Who knows? We talked about other uh, people, different sorts of artists and musicians. One uh, snapshot we had up here was of Arlo, I'm sorry, Woody Guthrie. And Woody Guthrie was hired, he was a folk singer, so he traveled all around the country and he wrote a whole lot of songs just about America and what he saw. And I'm sure there's some songs that you uh, used to sing back in grade school. Songs like, this land is your land, this land is my land, from California to New York Island. That was written by Woody Guthrie during this period because he was just hired by the government to go out and write songs. And lastly, we talked a little bit about the CCC, the Civilian Conservation Corps. If you've ever been over around Wayne or Wayne County, there's an area over there called Cabway Lingo. And Cabway Lingo is a little resort area you can go and you can rent some cabins there. I think you can fish there, you can trail ride. It's just a nice little place out in the woods and that was built by the CCC during the Great Depression. So I don't know how many people have been there, but you can go visit that. And it's really not very far from Louisiana. I'm gonna guess 15 miles maybe. Um, interesting enough, the name Cabway Lingo comes from the different counties in that area. Cabell, Wayne, Mingo, and Lincoln. So you put all that together and they got Cabway Lingo out of it. So for those of you who have been there, understand that was from a New Deal project under the CCC umbrella. There's also a lot of CCC stuff up around Moorhead. I know there's a CCC trail there. And it's just all throughout, once again, this is not just in Eastern Kentucky, it's all throughout the United States. And the WPA was the same way. They did their work all over the nation. I'm gonna run through a couple of pictures now of WPA buildings. Here's a building that was built in Lawrence County by the WPA. Probably can't tell what it is. Here's what it looks like now. And some of you may recognize that as Blaine, the old Blaine School. So this was before it burned down and it caught on fire and there's just the ruins of this standing out at the foot of Adams Hill. Another shot up there. Here's another building that was built in Louisa by the WPA. Does this look familiar to anyone? And by the way, you can tell there's workers still up here working. You can see bars in the window, so you get a feeling this is probably gonna be a jail and that's what it looks like now. So this is actually the back of the old courthouse. Used to be the main courtroom and that's where the jail was. I remember walking by here on the sidewalk as a young guy and there would be people up here in jail. And they would yell at you and it would scare me and I would run. Here's another building. If anyone can guess where this is. This building's still standing. It pretty much looks exactly like this. I'll show you what it looks like now. Any guesses where that is? This would be the Lomansville School. So if you're going from Louisa towards Paintsville, south, this is on your right-hand side when you get to Lomansville. It's actually apartments now, and people live up in these places. And what you'll start to notice is the look of these buildings, these stone-cut buildings. What they did is they came into areas, and they would find large quantities of rock up in the hills, and they would just cut that stone right on site so you didn't have to transport a lot of rock back and forth. But all of them had this look. And once you know what a WPA building looks like, You'll see them all over the place. They pretty much all have that cut stone look. Here's another one. This was another schoolhouse in Lawrence County. Still standing. Here's what it looks like today. Some of you may recognize this as Emanuel Baptist Church. This is up by Happy Mart and Doc's Pizza and, uh, oh, what's the name of that? Edsel's Garage there. Some of you may go to church there. Once again, back, back up. That's what it looked like then. That's what it looks like now. Here's another one for you. I got several different shots of this one. That's an older picture. Once again, it looks pretty much like the rest of them. Here's after they added on an addition to it down here. Still, this building is standing, but you can't really tell. Here's the back of it. I'll go ahead and uh, end the suspense for you. It's this building now. 
And really they did a whole lot of changes to it and I think they knocked down a portion of it and then they built a school around it. But if you've ever been in Mr. Chapman's library, that's part of the old school and I think that's where the cafeteria was and that, Mr. Chapman has a window in there and that's where the food was served back and forth. So that's the old part of the building. And if you're in Fallsburg, you notice that the school, they still have these signs up, built by the WPA in 1936. Here's another one for you. I know it's not a very good photo, but it's the best one I can find of this particular school. Here's what it looks like now. I'm sure a lot of you have driven past this before. This is the Martha School. So this is right across from Rouse Market, out Martha. What's inside now? I actually went in it a while back and took some photographs and it's just a lot of hay in there. How about this building? Anyone recognize this? Here's what it looks like now. City Hall of Louisa. And interestingly enough, this side used to be the fire department and they parked the fire engine in there. And this side was the police department and there was a jail in there. So not so much now. Now you go here and you pay your water bill. They still have a meeting room here and the mayor's office is still in here. The police are still uh, here, but there's no longer a jail there. They don't hold anyone. If you go inside the building, you'll see this plaque from the WPA, erected in 1939 by the WPA, and it tells you who all was on city council and the mayor, a guy named Dewey Isaacs. Uh, one last building I think we'll look at. I'll go ahead and tell you this was built as the county garage, but it's no longer used as that. And this is a building that a lot of you have probably been past many times in your life. Here's what it looks like now. If you think you know where it is, this is the little sort of book room at the Louisa East, and the buses all drive around it every day. So this old building here, which has been used for storage and books and maybe a garage and who knows what else, started out as a WPA project, which was a county garage. Let me throw this one at you. Anyone recognize where this is? I know a couple of you will, and I'll go ahead and be honest with you. This is not Lawrence County. This is in a neighboring county. Here's what it looks like now. This is the massive old courthouse in downtown Inez in Martin County. Once again, there's what it looked like when they built it. This is what it looks like now. And I guess Martin County has like three or four courthouses. I don't know, but this one's still standing. I don't know what all they do with it anymore. Coming back to Lawrence County, here's another structure. And usually when I show this, people think it's a church and the WPA did not build any churches. They didn't get involved in that at all. They're building public buildings like libraries and schools and jails. So this is a school. This was an older part of the school which had been there before and they added this part on. Here's sort of another look at it. The old part and you can see the new part that the WPA added on. If you want to see what it looks like now, that's what it looks like now. Just an empty parking lot. Where is it you say? Well it's at Louisa West and the old school sat right here. In fact I remember when they knocked the old school down I was a student here at the school and they just came in with this giant big crane and a wrecking ball and they just started demolishing the school the old school while we were still in this school. So as you can imagine, not a whole lot of work went on and the teachers pretty much had to give up because we were all sitting there with our noses pressed against the window watching this giant wrecking ball tear the school down. I don't think we would do anything like that now because it could be a hazard, people could die. Another reason to love the 70s. The last thing we'll wind up on is just looking at some old road projects throughout Lawrence County. I don't really know where any of these are, and I always ask my students, if you recognize the lay of the land or some of these houses or barns, if you could tell me where it is, that would be great. Uh, they're just using, a, looks like a mule team here, and some people using just simple implements to build a road here in Lawrence County. Here's another one. This could be any number of roads here in the county. This could be going up Five Forks Hill or Blaine Hill or Adams Hill or Peach Orchard, who knows? Just a mule team here working and building a road. Here they are taking a break, and you can see there's big rocks here and smaller stone here, so they were just uh, breaking these rocks up into little gravel, which would be pretty rough work. Here's another paved road, the WPA, well I say paved with stone, the WPA's built. Here's a barn and a tree and a house. This always looks a little familiar to me, but I don't know where it is here in the county. I do know this is on Route 1 going towards Webville because it says so on the picture, but I don't really know where it is. The very crude old bulldozer here doing some work. Once again, you see the mule team here in an old work building. I'm sure this was probably full of dynamite where they were blasting the hill so they could build the work or build the road. Another thing they did was they helped build little community libraries. So you had these libraries out in your community and people could come there and get books or whatever they needed without having to go all the way to Louisa. So in Norris, Kentucky, if you know where that is, they actually had a little WPA library. And here's what it looked like. I know, pretty impressive structure. 
just a little shack. I guess this guy was a Norse librarian. So the library would loan books to them and they could loan them out to people in the community who needed them. There's another in here called, uh, I guess, the Pack Town Library off of Route 3, built by the WPA as well. And you can see it's a little more modern. They actually had a little lean-to port here with a car underneath it. I guess this is the Pack Town Librarian. And the last uh, photograph we went on here, this is somewhere in the county where the WPA has built a nice little bridge here over some little creek. And you see the road sweeps way out through here and loops around. I've often wondered if this is not out of Irish Creek somewhere. I really don't know. This is just somewhere in the county. So if you want to show this to maybe some of your family members, maybe your parents or grandparents, if you're seeing them, don't go to the house, but you can share this with them. And you recognize some of these areas in Lawrence County, you can let me know. But the WPA left a big imprint on Lawrence County. Everything from some schools, a lot of those buildings still standing, uh, courthouses, city hall, uh, these little roads and bridges they built all over the place. And it's not just Eastern Kentucky. These are all over the United States. So the WPA had a big impact and put people back to work and built buildings and roads that we're still using today. We're going to wind it up right here and we'll be back tomorrow with even more cool economic stuff.